All right, let's talk about uh, the Nibonian, the next period of time. There we go. So this is what, you know, uh, it looked like. Things are starting to come back together. Pangea is going to be forming eventually. Um, North America is kind of continuing to rotate. Um, it's still mostly located around the equator, um, transgressive, regressive events, etc. Uh, so here in the Devonian, we're going to see kind of a, a drop in carbon dioxide and oxygen, a little glaciation event at the end of the Devonian. Uh, more on that here in just a little bit. Um, so along with Sil the Silurian, Devonian is called the Age of Fishes. Um, fish continue to evolve and, you know, rapidly in the oceans. Early tetrapods, tetra means four, pods means fish. So early tetrapods, these are fish with legs, um, evolve. These are ancestors actually of all land-dwelling vertebrates. And they first appeared in the Devonium. Um, land plants continue to diversify. First forests finally appear um, for seeds, for soil development, allowing plants to reproduce on dry land. Oops. Um, the oldest fossils of insects and spiders come about during this time. Ooh, everyone loves insects and spiders. And the Devonian ended with a mass extinction. So it'll be the second one. A little slice of what the Devonian might have looked like. Some nasty characters in the oceans. You know, sea wasn't looking, or the land wasn't looking all that fun uh, either. So again, known as the uh, again the age of fishes. Um, the biggest diversification in the oceans was in the fish. That's the age of fishes. So we're starting to see a lot of uh, different fishes evolve via the fossil record. Uh, the two prominent groups were agnathans, which were jawless fishes, and placoderms, uh, the first jaw fish. Uh, some placoderms reached very, very large sizes. Um, the Dunkleosteus, nicknamed the terror fish, is 26 feet long. It has a skull that's four feet across. It's, it's bigger than the screen. That's actually this thing in the background here. I have uh, some more pictures of it. Um, sharks start to appear in the Devonian. Uh, lobed fin fish, uh, for instance, lungfish, start to evolve. Um, the ancestors of rays, stingrays, manta rays, evolved. Um, and then um, the most abundant type of fish that we see today, trout, salmon, tunas, those things start to evolve, at least their ancestor did. Going back to the lobed fin fish, uh, lobed fin fish breathe air uh, when they raise their head above, above the water. Um, which was a necessary ad adaptation, obviously, for animals to eventually make their way on land. So that's why these uh, lobed fin fish are kind of uh, one step in the evolutionary process of getting things on land. So this is a current, uh, a modern, jawless fish. This is a lamprey, I believe. Um, I just thought it was cool looking. And it looks really, you know, it looks archaic, right? It looks like it's something from another world. But this is this type of animal uh, this type of fish evolved during this time period and here's the and here's the old dunkle the dunkley osteris um so this, this thing is 26 feet wide head four feet across it's made up of these bony plates and so we get some really well preserved fossils of its head um yeah so here's the the dunkley osteus compared to maybe an average one, compared to like a, a great white and a human. So yeah, this thing is like four feet across. So a very common fossil, and it fossilized well because it, this fish was made up of these hard bony plates um, kind of on the front here. So that's why this part of the fish fossilized so well. Some interesting sharks evolved during this time. Uh, we don't really see uh, these types today, but in the fossil records, these are some of the sharks that we have with these weird platforms on their backs, these weird kind of sawtooth jaws. It's very weird looking. Um, and here's a modern day uh, lungfish that breathes air. And so these uh, type of fish, again, one step in the evolutionary process for things, organisms to eventually make their way out to land. 
when we're doing this time, plants diversify. So as plants are moving out of watery, swampy beach areas onto continents, they need stronger structures to support their own weight. Um, air is less dense than water, so it's kind of hard to stand up in water or in air. You know, it's like easier to balance with water. It's not that easy to balance in air. So these, these plants need to be much more supportive. They also need to uh, process to conserve water. Um, if things are living in or near the ocean, it's a very good water source, but if they're living in land away from the water source, they need to conserve and store water somehow. Um, so the evolution of the system to transport water, uh, nutrients through the stems of these plants, the so-called vascular system, became necessary for plants to diversify on land. <laughs> Excuse me. Again, the start of the Devonian, this is probably what land looked like weathering and erosion, a lot of rocks, and these weird kind of little plants. Um, but there were four adaptations that provided the means for the vast and, and quick, geologically speaking, species diversification uh, during the Paleozoic era, and for plants to eventually evolve into things like very large trees. Uh, and finally, those trees developing into forests. <coughs> So, uh, of those four adaptations, the first one was roots. So, roots improve water and nutrient absorption, and you can, the plants can anchor into the soil. Um, soil itself wasn't created in, until more plants were created, because soil is a mix of sediment and organic material. So, dead leaves, dead plants, those sort of things mixing with sediment is what makes soil. So as we're progressing, we're starting to get bigger plants, trees, forests eventually. So anyway, four adaptations. So roots were one, seeds were another one, allowed for dissemination of uh, over longer distances. Um, leaves, more surface area for photosynthesis to occur, which is the kind of food source, that process of photosynthesis is created in the plant, creating food for itself. And then finally, the development of kind of woody tissues um, protecting the kind of uh, interior, um, making a more efficient vascular system, which allowed for trees to grow vertically, a little more structure, a little more movement of material. And so we're starting then eventually, as the, the Devonian continues, getting into forest things looking like this. Still very weird looking, but that's where we're going. The first insects evolved, everyone's favorite. Um, uh, they appeared not too long after plants appeared, um, but before amphibians began to populate the continent. We'll talk about amphibians in Mississippi. So we had to have plants first before insects, it, it appears. Um, so their evolution has been kind of closely intertwined with terrestrial plants other animals. The earliest insects were um, wingless. A type of uh, insect called a springtail appears to be the oldest known insect, the oldest, at least the oldest known fossil that we have. Um, today, insects are more numerous uh, on Earth. Um, the most numerous, I should say, the most numerous organism on Earth in terms of number of species and actual individuals. Insects are everywhere. They're the most prolific life on Earth. Um, so this is a fossilized springtail, um, so something like this appears to have been like some of the oldest um, uh, organisms, and we still have these type of organisms today. Um, this is a modern day springtail under magnification. Look how cute that is. I think you'd be mad at insects. But towards the latter part of the Devonian, not at the end, but in the late Devonian, we had another extinction where 75% of all life went extinct. And part of that, uh, a part of it, it's theory, or hypothesized, I should say, it's hypothesized that plants were actually to blame for that. So this extinction occurred over about 25 million year period. It really devastated reef building organisms, sponges and corals, and other marine invertebrates, trilobites, uh, other shelled things like brachiopods and ammonites. And again, this one took place over a 25 million year period. Seems long, geologically speaking, not so much. 
uh, marine vertebrates, so like the fish and things like that, were not strongly affected by this. Um, there was some diversity loss, but it was either the soft-bodied stuff or some of these other things. Um, little is known about the extinction of land organisms at the time because there really wasn't too many of them. So what may have triggered this, and stick with me now, is the development of forests, the plant diversification. By more plants, right, taking in CO2, giving out oxygen, right, so we're changing the atmosphere, um, but um, by doing so, well, I should say, let me take, let me backtrack real quick. So the atmosphere is changing. We get more plants. We're starting to change the atmosphere. So that's kind of one. Um, there's also an overabundance of nutrients going into the water, causing widespread oceanic anoxia, lack of oxygen. Um, so as plants were creating soil, as plants' roots dig into the ground, it breaks up rocks. And so breaking up rocks, uh, the weathering process via plants is called um, root wedging. Like in Geology 101, I've heard about root wedging. It's a weathering process. So the roots of these plants and trees and forests are now able to grow deep and start to break up these rocks. The rocks contain minerals. Some minerals are nutrients, you know, vital for life. So as more of these minerals are broken up and wash into the uh, shallows of the ocean, some of these minerals are nutrients for some of these organisms. Um, in some cases, uh, for algae. Let's see if I have this here. Um, and so this overabundance in nutrients flowing into the ocean can cause a lot of algae to bloom. When algae bloom, it's microscopic plants that are floating around the ocean, they don't live very long. When things die, it takes oxygen out of the environment. It takes oxygen to break things down, to help things decompose. All right? So you get a lot of plants, trees, and forests breaking up rocks, those minerals going into the ocean. Those minerals serve as nutrients for some organisms, for instance, algae. You get a bunch of algae, and they die. And then when they die, that decomposition process takes the oxygen out of the water. So now you have a bunch of stuff swimming around the ocean that breathes oxygen. But by the way, fish breathe oxygen. They don't breathe water. They take oxygen out of the water. They, they breathe oxygen. They shoot, use gills to do it. So in any case, so now you have a lack of oxygen. So now things can't take that oxygen and breathe it in the, in the ocean. Therefore, things die. Um, yeah. So that's kind of what happens. So tr trees that are blamed. Who knew? Trees breaking up rocks, pouring nutrients into the ocean. You get a bunch of stuff growing, like algae. That stuff dies. When it dies, the decomposition process takes oxygen away from the water. Therefore, there's not enough oxygen to breathe for everything else around. So you get uh, a big, a big death. Right. So trilobites kind of saw their way out during this time. Um, uh, um, a lot of jawless fish, brachiopods, uh, some types of corals um, kind of make their way out at the end of the Devonian. All right, so we're getting out of the Devonian, and then we're going to tiptoe into the Carboniferous. Also, um, it's kind of the Carboniferous. It's known as the Carboniferous in some most parts of the world, in the United States, we know it as the Mississippian and Pennsylvania, but I mean, we have diversification of trees, we're just going to start to get some reptiles kind of coming about during this time. Um, so yeah, so here we are in the Devonian, some kind of vascular plants are starting to take hold. Um, con conifers, cone-bearing trees, those will come in the next period. Uh, before we get out of here, I'll tell you what, let me give you another part of the super secret code. This is the number seven. You got me? The number seven. One more time, the number seven. See you back here in just a second. <laughs>